November 26th, meeting of the Junior. Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised. Comments made during this meeting will be broadcast on the Comcast channel, Comcast Access Channel 15. Uh, we only have one item on the agenda tonight, and that's to meet with Police Chief. He's here. Thank you for coming in. And that is to review the fiscal year 19 Police Department budget. So, Ed, do you want to start us off? Give us some background. Yes, sir. I think if you remember from last week's meeting, there was a discussion regarding the FY19 budget and uh, a report by um, myself that we would be, uh, we meeting that uh, Mr. Buckley and I would be presenting an FY20 budget uh, by uh, December 10th. And then there was some discussion regarding um, the police department's FY19 budget. And so we invited Chief Wall um, and Mr. Buckley and members of the advisory are here. So um, basically it is to review the uh, adjustments that were made to Chief Wall's budget by F-19 and to uh, uh, address some of the concerns that the town of Canton had regarding uh, spending line items. And uh, I think maybe we'll start off with uh, Mr. Buckley and then we'll have Thank you. Uh, thank you. But the police department is on track to run out of or exhaust their training budget by January and their overtime budget by March. Um, that's what caused my concern. Um, the concern initiated, originated from we're trying to figure out how much free cash we have available to put towards the fiscal 20 budget, but we don't know until we're certain on the status of the fiscal 19 budget. Um, I come to you because Chapter 44 governs municipal finance and Section 31. Of chapter 44 says that no department financed by municipal revenue shall incur a liability in excess of in excess of appropriation and then it goes on and explains the process by town meeting and um, what we're supposed to do and what we've already done um, as far as town meeting goes another section in chapter 44 section 62 uh, lays out the penalties for violations of this chapter. And it says, any city or town district officer who normally violates or authorizes or directs um, any official or employee to violate any, any provision of this chapter, in chapter 44, and it goes on and lists the penalties. And further, at the end of the statute, this section, it says that the selectmen shall report such violations to the district attorney. And there's good reasons for this. Um, departments are obligated to live within the confines of the budget the town meeting gives them. And if you didn't have that, um, you really just wouldn't have any, any basis for anything. So I could wait till March to come in and tell you that the police department's out of money, or I can come in now and tell you that the police department's out of money. Because as you can imagine, if we waited until March um, and then there really were no funds available, um, it would be very difficult to manage at that time. However, if we take care of it now in November, it's a um, much more manageable situation. Would, um, would your suggestion on that? that um, so what you're saying is that he's not managing his budget correctly and that he can't um, spend the money that he has now. Uh, I just don't know why you bring that up now. Well, as I said, they'll be out of money in March. Okay. 
What time? When is the money supposed to last? Q3. So no, I don't want to personalize this, but um, there have been 21 weeks gone by in the fiscal year, and in 20 of those weeks, if you just take 152nd, $11,000 a week in overtime, only one of those weeks has the department spent less. Some weeks is $5,000 more, some weeks is $3,000 more, some weeks is $8,000 more. And <clears throat> That's happened for 21 weeks, 20 to 21 weeks. You extrapolate that out, <coughs> either we have to come up with 300,000 more in free cash, take that away from all the other departments to continue this level of spending, or we have to manage to the bottom line, which was at the beginning of the year $11,000 per week, and now it's about seven or $8,000 per week because of what's going on over the first 21 weeks. So that's what I'm saying, just manage to whatever the bottom, whatever, <coughs> whatever is remaining in the bottom line. And it's about $8,000. And what can you spend? $8,000. Can I address this? Sure. Yeah. Because, again, this is uh, the third time publicly this has been brought up and the first time that you actually brought it up to me. That's not true. Yeah, that well, is true. Do we, we have a discussion over this? It's not true. Do you want to we have that discussion? First off, we've front loaded most of our overtime uh, training and in service. Uh, most of the guys have already completed that. And that's been 40 hours for the year. Well, the firearms are done for the department, and I think like, three people left to do in service training for the 40 hours. So that's why that takes care of things. We also had an election. There's $10,000, $9,000 that we put out in overtime with the task that we reimburse us for for doing an election. In the first 20 weeks. Uh, we have a new computer system that was put in that uh, we spent some money on computer maintenance. Again, it's probably not going to carry on through the next 31 weeks, but it's something that kind of front rows what we're doing here. And we had uh, spent about $10,400 of new office and investigations. It's after July, we uh, looked at hiring more PIs to fill spots. So we had to go out and do that. So we spent some money in the first half of the year on the physical the second half of the year. The second off, we get the uh, 901 grant. We take that $38,704 and turn that back to the town because I offset overtime on the desk. You know, some of these problems are inherent. Some of these problems are due to the contractual issues. Trying to keep a minimum staffing on the roads, I still have to adhere to vacation days, sit days, holidays, and anything else in the contract. I also have to uh, look at some of the other training issues that I have to take care of, sexual assault training. It's, it's mandatory. I have a sense of people so I have to make sure they're out So, you know, are we, are we going to overspend by the end of the year? It's possible. We did last year, but we just didn't have enough to actually do what we're supposed to do. I sat down and, and turned in my budget at the beginning of last year, this time last year, looking to cover a minimum amount of shifts and a minimum amount of training. I didn't get either one of those budgets, but I still have to cover a minimum amount of shifts. You know, we run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, you know, unlike most businesses, I have 31 people, one in the academy, so I have 30 people to take care of that job all the time. People deserve their time off of that contract. In order to do that, because my shifts, two out of the three shifts are at minimum all the time, every shift I fill is 100% overtime. the time. So they're granted these hours by contract. They're granted this time off by contract. They can't deny them the time off. And it wouldn't matter. Every time they take a shift, they're always going to cost over time. So we're trying to fill that. We're trying to do the best we can with that. Yeah. If you have any other particular questions on some of the spending, then we would spend some money in the schools. Um, put people into the schools, take care of that, we'll spend some money in the community. A lot of the low races, the fireworks, you know, the field days and all these things that require a police presence happen in the better weather. So I don't anticipate that carrying through other than tree lighting next week through the winter time. So I expect that naturally the overtime will be reduced in the office of vacation and tend to take vacation in the better weather than during the winter time. So 
if you just take those numbers for the first you know, 20 weeks and you bring them out, it doesn't really give you a full picture of what the actual yield is. So I, th I think what just happened is the police chief said, I'm never talking to you about this, which is fine. Um, and I think he also just said he's not going to change anything. You know, the $300,000 that I have projected is to cash to something that the police department in May will be in If that's the case, we won't have any feedback on this year. And letter of the law, the department will run out sometime in January through March, overtime, and will be deficit spending in violation of the law. <coughs> and the main is So that's why I'm so, That's not exactly what I said. So please yeah. have a quote that. Yeah, but those are my words. Yeah. But what we ought to do, Mike, is we ought to sit down and go over the line items and go over the spending and go over what we anticipate uh, and, and do this. And, and it doesn't have to be done in a public forum. Uh, it does have to be done in a public forum. But, uh, I don't know. I think you, you, you've got your forecast out there. I heard you say some of the big nuts have already been paid and we're going to slow down a little bit um, coming up. Are we realistically going to end up in a place where we're not overspent or we come in close to the budget number? So, so last year I ran this about as lean as I could. And again, you have to take care of the things you have to take care of. And I've been coming after the town. We, every town report yeah, for the last six years telling you that we've been understaffed and when you're understaffed we're undermanned and, and we can't be at that point anymore and, and I don't know how to be any more clear about that. Keeping four officers on the road in the minimum in this town is, uh, I mean, it's, it's where we should be. It's where we were 30 years ago and it's what we need to do to be safe for the officers and to be able to do our job. Last year I was about 78,000 we had to transfer at the end of the year if that's correct. It's, it's pretty much what I had asked the advisory board for it and, and where we were going to be based on, you know, and, and I'm not, I'm not a, a math guy. I mean, things change. We have so many variables that happen. If one guy takes a vacation day off on the 4th floor, it's no fill. If one guy takes off on a midnight shift, it is a fill. And if a sergeant takes a shift versus a patrolman, it costs more money. If you fill a night shift, it's 8% more because you have a differential. Holidays, you know, we, we budget to pay everybody for their holidays, but the contract says they can take that time off. So when they take the time off and I have to fill it at time and a half, that holiday money becomes, it, it's not fulfilled. It's not what the contract says for the full, for the full money. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of variables and everything else and, and a lot of things to change. Yeah, we've we've uh, put out a lot of money the first 20 weeks of the year. But again, we've, we've accomplished a lot through in-service training, the 40 hours that people required to do. We had an election. We had um, a couple of the new officer investigations. So we put out more money that uh, I don't anticipate having to do again the rest of the year. And again, that makes your, your weekly um, totals go up. Like I said, this is pretty simple. Um, there's a certain finite amount of money. The decision has been made, whether it happened with one of you or two of you or five of you, um, and the department head to have four people on the road, one person in the building at all times, and to operate um, under that cost structure, even though the funding for that cost structure isn't in place. And that is the problem, it's that simple. <coughs> so Chief, since you front-ended a, a lot of these, uh, uh, these expenditures, uh, do you feel that you'd be able to spend eight thousand dollars a month going forward a week? Uh, I, I mean, it's not a calculation you probably do right here in front of us, but the, that's that's the calculus to get to the bottom line budget. Depends on. I mean, there's a lot of things. We're turning it into winter now. And if we have a mild winter and we don't have to put anybody on. You know, it, it could be realistic. But again, my my budget last year we carried the figures over from last year. And it wasn't adequate last year. So I'm not sure how I can feel it's going to be adequate this year. But here's, here's, the, here's the thing. The town meeting in the fall reconciled that. Uh, you came to a town meeting, and town meeting supported you in more overtime and um, 
and, and more into into a budget, but it was a supplement to to fix what you what you said ailed you, and those were the figures the town meeting had, and town meeting granted those to you. You know, every other department uh, comes to town meeting in the spring. That's their budget. They have to live to it. Um, you needed that to be reconciled at town meeting, fall town meeting, <coughs> and town meeting did that. Town meeting being the legislative body, uh, the, 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 that's the only body that, that can spend money. Board of Selectmen can't spend a dime without the express approval of town meeting. And anytime we write a check, uh, it's town meeting has granted us the right to do it. Um, and no department head can either. Uh, and as Mike said, uh, there, there are statutes that, that limit that spending. So we're at a place where uh, we, need, we need to get to that, except for you know, an emergency overage for a storm or some unrelated uh, issue. Um, and as far as uh, staffing with, with the four crew members on, mm -hmm. uh, I know that's what you want, I, and I think that's what we want too, uh, to, to handle the level of risk that we have in, in town, especially given, um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of shootings lately, and uh, and so the level of risk is, is certainly greater now than it was years and years ago. Uh, but we need to manage the level of risk that's feasible. Um, I mean, heck, you know, after 9/11, we could build every single building a bridge out of titanium instead of steel, so an airplane couldn't blow them up. But it's not feasible. We need to live within a level of risk. And what that risk is, is what town meeting said it is. That risk is the, the risk that you need to take for your, for your department for the, for the welfare of the town of Pembroke uh, has to be within the budget that town meeting granted you. Again, excepting for emergencies. So how do we get there? That's a, that's a question that I think, I don't think we could settle right here and now, but I do think it's a question that if you could sit down with Mike and Ed and go over these line items, um, and you know the board of selectmen are now aware, uh, the public is too, uh, that there's uh, that there's some spending control that needs to, some measures that need to to be put in place, and hopefully some of the front end money there will allay some of that, and going forward it will be less spending than than you had the last, the last 21 weeks. So uh, I don't think we're going to get to a, a bottom line here with, with a number other than $8,000 a week is the math. If, if you can sit down with, with Mike and Ed, um, I, I think it would be more productive. And if we need to meet again um, in the near future, let's do it. But I, I think Mike is right that uh, to alerting us to this. And I think he's also right that um, uh, we need to play a little catch up. And this is not the, the form for that. It's really you have to sit down with a calculator somewhere and, and then bring, bring those answers back to the board again. And I think that's where we are here. You know, the chief alluded to the fact that he was about $80,000 short last year <coughs> in his overtime budget and town meeting appropriated that plus an additional $80,000 uh, last month. So. Um, you know, basically the conversation that I've had with him, um, you know, that going forward, uh, you know, if we have approximately 300000 left in his overtime budget, um, that, you know, we should be able to uh, to uh, monitor that between now and June the 30th. And I think, as he alluded to, that uh, his overtime costs probably will go down um, and hopefully we'll be able to manage that uh, the remaining 300000 in that overtime budget for the remaining 30-something uh, weeks. That makes sense. Uh, any other comments from the board? Ms. Lackman? Yeah. Uh, I know you and I have talked many times about finding solutions to help out your department. Yeah. Uh, what outside sources are you using to utilize trying to get your department up to snuff without kind of putting on the taxpayer, which the, I said, Town meeting already gave you the money for this coming year, so I'm just wondering, like, what other sources are you utilizing? What other sources? Are like the uh, like county, uh, the DA's office, the sheriff's office, anything that could basically they could find stuff for our department to be helping out. 
you know, the drug task force, which basically takes a lot of uh, some of the officers' time and money, right? Yep, sure does. So, I just wonder what, what else, like I said, what else are we looking into and what are you communicating to the public of what are you looking into? So, so the officers are involved in a lot more than just stopping cars. You know, that's, that's one of the lesser duties. The, the outreach program now, that's something that we're involved in actively. Yeah, that does require people going out. Uh, it requires some overtime. And uh, we've, we've had to accept that role because it's important. It's something that we have to do. Uh, same thing with the schools. You know, we have a full-time officer in the school. It doesn't help my patrol, but it helps the school, helps the community. We also have five officers that are in as liaisons in the elementary schools and in the middle school, and you have one in the high school. Because you need to keep that, that, that communications going. You need to build that bridge between the students, the faculty, and the police department. So, you know, I look at those things, and so that's, um, you know, expenditures that we could do without, but should we do without, you know? I don't think so. I think we have to, to, we have to build that. And again, every year I've been, you know, trying to tell you, and it comes down to people. We're, we're, we're not a for-profit organization. We run three shifts every single day, seven days a week on holidays. And uh, that takes a lot out of 31 people to do. And, and so to, to, to run a minimum shift, to run four cars on a row, one on the desk, and you realize the person on the desk handles all the walk-ins, all the radios, all the phone calls, including the 911 and emergency medical dispatch. I mean, they're extremely busy. They do a lot of work. They do good work. And, um, but the problem is when you only have staffing levels, that's minimum. Every time somebody goes out and fill in that shift, if, you know, we were to be able to fill only 50% of the shifts, if every shift had one officer more than minimum, so you got six people at work, one calls out, and you don't have to fill it, and you're still at a safe level, we cut the overtime down. And right now, we're probably filling 75 or 80% because two out of three shifts are minimum. So hiring people. Now I have a person in the academy right now, graduates probably, I think, March. I have two spots reserved for those offices in February, February 4th. They'll be out in July. I anticipate being able to field a patrol of six people on a on, uh, day shift, six on a four to 12, and five on a midnight shift. The only shift we have to fill is some of them is on a midnight. Um, and again, one person's in house, so it's four on the road, five on the road. That's where we need to go. We need to address it, you know, and, and we've been trying to do this for years. There's been movement, but it gets to the point where you get frustrated that you can't get it fixed. And it, it needs to be fixed. You know, and, and you go to advisory board, they've heard me say it over and over and over again. I'm tired, you know. But if somebody doesn't say it, it's, it, it's never going to get fixed. And it needs to. We've fixed pretty much everything else in town. You know, we've got a great school system, but it started from nothing. And we put money into it, and we focused on it, and we fixed it, and we made it a really great school system. When are we going to take care of the police department and do this? You know, the, uh, the firefighters were able to use their ambulance on. We don't make any money. You know, I think we had $12,000 in detail, so admin fees. And uh, the $38,000 they get for 911, and they put right back into overtime to pay for people. Uh, or if you give us another, um, that they pay for our 16 hours of in-service training, so we get direct reimbursement uh, for the training. We have to put out for it, but we get reimbursement that goes back to the town to square that out. And every officer has to do at least 16 hours um, every two years at 24 on the third. Uh, and we do that. Now, I also train seven part-time officers to fill in for the regular officers when we can't fill shifts so that we don't have to order people to work and uh, we keep things, keep things decent. And uh, you know, I have to train these officers too. It's a, a lot less of rate, but we're responsible for that. And, and again, I come into the advisory board with, with basically a zero base budget. And say, hey, this is what it actually costs. You know, food and maintenance is $80,000. $40,000 isn't going to handle it. And if we continue to push that down the road, you know, you're making the police officers responsible for what the town should be taking care of in the budget. And there is money in other places. I've seen it go to places. Uh, and I'm not going to point any fingers or anything else, but if, if we can't come up with and can fix one department, I, I don't want to be wasting my time. I know the board of selectmen is always been supportive of this. The numbers haven't changed. 
the need hasn't changed. I think it's gotten a little more drastic because people are being a little more resistant to police officers. And, and I don't want to send people alone on pause. It's dangerous. So I would gladly sit down with Devin Mike. I wish we had before this sat down and actually discussed this. And I'm glad to do that. And maybe we come up with something that's, uh, you know, maybe the picture's a little bit different. So, Chief, one of, one of the things that I think, I don't know this, but I suspect that one, one of the reasons this is coming up now so late in the game is that it's like you're a victim of your own virtue because people have respected you enough to to let it go, and now now we need to bring it up in public. So I think I think that's that's why Mike hasn't brought it up um, uh, to us enough to, to make us take action before. So at town meeting, when I asked for the hundred sixty thousand dollars in overtime, the seventy five thousand dollars to hire the two offices, that's exactly what that was for. The overtime wasn't to fix the budget I already had. It was for the addition that I added. I, I added a half shift on the midnight shift and, and a, um, a fill of somebody's out of the day shift. And that's how my figures came up. But it had nothing to do with the, the 19 budget of the place. It was to take care of the two things that I wanted to do. Um, the budget already had some issues, and we're going to try and work that out. But again, if you come in and say, these are the numbers. This is what I need based on, on what's required and based on the shift level that we need to put out. And you don't get that. And we ended up being in a, in a deficit. So the town, the town of Pembroke has been, and it's it's, it's not a, a, a pushback against police, pushback against um, every department. You know, at town at town meeting and at the ballot boxes, we saw uh, the people don't want to pay for the services that uh, that we and other department heads think they deserve a need. So we have to live within what the people have spoken of. Um, and in your department in particular, the fire department uh, also, uh, being within that bu budget, um, uh, there's a level of risk involved. There's a level, level of risk for the officers, a level of risk for the, for the citizens too. But the people have spoken that they will only stand for a certain level of risk uh, financially. So, again, I'll, I'll make the analogy about the titanium building to keep planes from crashing into it. People don't want to pay for a titanium building. They'll take the risk of a plane crashing into it. And I think that's essentially what happened in that, that ballot box vote last year. People were willing to take a risk. Or they didn't believe us. And one of the two things are going to happen. The risk is going to become evident in a drastic situation, or the people are just going to say, you're Brian Wolf, not just you, but everyone here. And that's, that's where we are. I think what you got to look at is that we're not talking about a metal building uh, being built. We're talking about police officers out on the street and their safety and the safety of the public. And that's what the chief is bringing forward to us by saying, and I know because I've been there, and it's been the same way when I was chief and when I was on the department. And this is my 53rd year as a sworn police officer. And I'll tell you, he's right. He's, it needs to be fixed. And somehow or other, it's got to be fixed. Because you can't just put a police officer out on the street by himself. When I, was, when I first started as a police officer 53 years ago, he's filling shifts now what we had 53 years ago. That's ridiculous. It's time for Pembroke to get off of their butt and take care of one of the departments. And that's what he's trying to tell you. And what Mike is trying to tell you is he's right because he has to manage the budget also. The problem is that they're not giving him enough money to take care of what he needs to be taken care of. And that's what he's saying. Every time we've gone to, to the advisory committee in the past, I don't care what chief it is. I started with Alfred Lanzalotta years ago, and every chief was the same way. You go in, if you go in and you take all of the benefits that the town has said, we're going to give you this benefit. We're going to give you this benefit. We're going to give somebody else this benefit. You add all of that up, 
and you go in and say, this is what we need to take care of those benefits, which is contractual. And they say, okay, it's going to be $100 for all this? Okay, we'll give you 45 or 50 and you And you live with it. And that's what all of these police departments and fire departments and DPW have tried to do over all of these years. For whatever reason, I have no idea why. What they should do is at least fund what the contract says that he's allowed to do. So they don't do that, though. Right? And when he comes up and says, this is what we need to make the citizens safe in town, and I want four officers on this shift, and I want five officers on that shift, that's all his training and experience is saying, this is what we need. And it's a different world today than what it was when I started years ago. And you just need more men, you need more training, and you just can't say, one of the people on the advisory committee said something to the chief about, about, well, can't you use blanks? It would be cheaper, you know, when you practice them. I mean, give me a break. It's, it's crazy, uh, you know, thinking like that. Well, let's not have any ammunition. Let's, let's just do away with the ammunition. That'll save money. He can't save money. He's training officers once a year now on firearms training. When I was chief, we did it four times a year. And they was recommending six or even more. The state police trains every month. I mean, if you don't have the training, you're either going to pay now or you're going to pay later. Either some officer is going to get killed or a civilian is going to get hurt or something's going to happen because training and all that stuff is really important. And, it's, and the town really has to come to the fact that if you've got a chief that comes up and says, this is what we need to make the town safe, then, you know, I stand behind the chief and I know the board does. But the problem lies is that they don't give him enough money to do what he's supposed to do, even contractually. There's no extras in there, believe me. I go every year, <coughs> I spend 40 hours in service training and do my firearms training for zero. To, to stay as a special police officer. And years ago, everybody used to get paid. They don't get paid anymore. All of those special police officers and all that go to all of these schools and training for nothing. We all do it for nothing. We don't get paid. And we always used to get paid. So, somehow or other, it's got to get fixed. It really does. And I believe him. When he says it's got to get fixed, it definitely has to get fixed. Well, um, I'll direct this to Mike. You had um, said you've got to figure eight thousand dollars a week, whatever it happens to be. Um, do you have a promising feeling about um, you know if you sit down with the chief and you sit down with that as has been suggested uh, earlier in the meeting that you can uh, come to an understanding that. You know, eleven thousand dollars is going to make it, but eight thousand dollars will, and this is what eight thousand dollars will cover. Um, first of all, I, I agree with what Bill just said. Um, other than advisory, I don't often agree with advisory, but it's really not advisory committee that's that's holding the strings on this. It's the townspeople. Um, I hope that after everyone hears the meeting tonight and as continue to hear the need tonight that the next time there is an override um, to fix this problem permanently and fix this problem the right way that everyone will stand behind the department heads and um, give their support. Um, if we are going to stick to the concept of four people on the road and one person at the desk 24-7, then no, I'm not optimistic um, that that $8,000 figure is feasible. And it's, to me, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. I think maybe the thing to do is um, everybody's spoken to peace tonight. Um, I think everybody understands each other. I don't know that if there's any person here who's wrong. Everybody's trying to do the right thing. Um, I think the thing to do would be to go back and figure out what the true cost of, um, just throw the budget out for now for, for the exercise. But what is the true cost of essentially minimum of five people. And then present that bill to the town and ask the town
town to say whether we want to pay, pay for that, and through you, of course. And if they don't, then we need to make adjustments. We can't just um, spend what, um, and this, I don't mean this in a bad way at all, but we can't just spend what a small group of people think is appropriate. We have to spend what 19,000 people think is appropriate. And I told this is Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm going to check for advisory. If they had any comments to make. Just briefly, um, you know, I think this is my 20th year in advisory. So, a few years ago, but I actually um, did, uh, did some looking into what other towns are paying by department just to see if we were off in any respect. Um, in the past two years, I, I presented that in the uh, meeting prior to the town meeting. And what I really found is that we're right in line. You know, if, if we're paying 10% for police, all the other towns are between like 9.8 and 10.2. So it's, you know, nothing was out of line. It's, it's not like we were putting too much money into this and not enough into that except for um, we were above average in the, uh, the, the health care benefits and, and that type of thing. Um, and that's because there's about what, a third to a quarter, a quarter to a third of the towns are paying 50%. So that drops the average. And we're paying, we're paying much higher. So in terms of how we're spreading the money um, isn't the problem. It's, it's a problem that uh, I know when we meet with various departments, I'm sure it gets the same thing. Every single department comes in there and they have a nice list of why they need to increase their spending and their staffing by 10% or 20% in order to meet what they should be doing. Um, so it's, it, it comes, just comes down to the point that you just can't increase um, everything uh, without getting additional money. As Mike said, uh, the town uh, you know, spoke, and as you said, the town spoke on that last year that they don't want to spend that additional money. We we're constrained by Prop 2 and a half, plain and simple. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know the, the difficulty is, is that uh, health care has gone up at, 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 you know, last year it was only 8%. Taxes two and a half percent, so you know that has to come from somewhere, and that's been uh, one of the constraining factors in all of the departments. Uh, the only question I would have for Mike, just pertaining to this, is if he has a comparison as to what the police spent last year through that 20-month period versus this year, um, you know, if they overspent it by X amount, projected out, when the additional money we just gave is still going to fall. Over 100,000 short of that, right? that, that would be the only question I had in that regard. Um, the chief mentioned that when he asked for a town meeting, it was just to get the additional, which would indicate he's still planning on being about $80,000 short. If he does just with a good logic, um, so I'm just going to you know, get the head wrapped around those two things. That was a good question. Else? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, having heard all this, uh, Ed, I look to you for uh, a suggestion of what to do in the immediate future. Well, number one, we'll definitely be looking at 2020. You know, we're going to you know, fine tune 2020 uh, before the 7th And then uh, as we chatted, uh, Mike and Rick and I will work on 2019.
represents 70% of our budget. The current fiscal year represents 22% of our budget.